This is section 2, Ghost HTTP package in detail. In this section, we're going to take a look at the HTTP package from Ghost standard library in detail, how to work with HTTP requests and responses, how to write middleware for a request, how to customize our HTTP server, how to test HTTP handlers, and how to use the context package. This is video 1, HTTP handler functions, the request object. In this video, we're going to look at how to access all of the elements of an HTTP request, how to parse a URL and access its different parts, and how to use Gorilla Max to create more complex rules. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the repository for this section, for this video. It's Impact Publishing, Hands-on Microservices, Section 2, Video 1, within the repository we uh, made on the first, on the second video of Section 1. First, we're going to look at the first example, it's example one. Uh, what we're going to be looking at is, if you remember from last section, HTTP messages requests have the following elements, an HTTP method, a path, an HTTP version. They have headers and a body. So uh, how do we access this in our handler function? Well, I created a get handler function that will take the path get. In this get handler function, we will start with different elements. Our proto, it's the version. The proto version can be separated into different parts. For example, we could access it as our proto major and minor, which are ints and are the two parts of the HTTP version. To access the method, we call a request method. To get the request URI, it's the URI that actually initiated the request. We do our request URI. Apart from that, we can get the full URL. The URL has different parts, as we have seen in section one. You remember we have the different parts, the scheme, the user password, the host, the port, the path, the query, and a fragment. All of that is accessible between the URL element in the request. The different parts can be accessed from the URL, our URL, which we assign to this variable, and then we, we call it from that one. The full URL we can get with string, we can get the scheme, the host, the path, the raw query, and the fragment. One thing that is important to know is that the usage of username and password in the URL is deprecated. Most clients actually strip the username and password. For example, Google strips the username and password, and so does Postman. So uh, you shouldn't use that. What we're referring to is this part here. This should not be used. Uh, it's been, it's deprecated, and it's also because you're sending your authentication parameters through the network without any sort of security whatsoever or encryption. So, well, the host name can also be separated into two parts. You know, we have the host name, which has from the URL we can get the host name, which is the host name, and the port, which is the port. Uh, we can also access the elements of the the different key values of the URL query of the query string by using URL the query function of of the URL. Query values actually have a very specific type, which is values. And values is actually an alias for map string slice of a strings for a map of a slices of a strings with a key of a string. Uh, well, we're going to iterate through all the values and show them. And we can also access headers through the R header, through R header, which is uh, actually um, it, it's a collection of, of headers, which have which are basically a key value, a key of type of string, and a value of type of slice of a string. So when we we are going to join them, and if we want to access one particular header, we can do so by accessing request header get, and then of the header we want to access. There are some headers that are so common that there are special functions for them. For example, referrer and user agent. There are lots of different headers. I, in the readme for this video, you will find uh, a couple of links where you can see all the different headers, uh, listings of different headers. And we can also access the body. Uh, in this case, the body is of type read closer, so we need to use a function that actually uh, takes a read closer or, or an IO reader for uh, as a parameter. When we do this, we'll get the body as, as a slice of bytes. So before printing, we need to uh, convert it to a string. So now that we have our get 
our get handler prepared it just prints everything we're going to run it through integrated terminal change directory sample one go run main.go and we're going to test it through postman uh we have a collection of of requests that you can use uh those are in the in the folder of the course repo for the video in the folder for the video of the post for of the of a course repository github repo and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be sending a, an http get we have here the username password this is a, get stripped by postman another thing is that when we are sending requests to a same machine generally clients like postman or curl uh, take out the hostman and the port so we won't be able to, to see that either but in the case we were actually uh, doing this show over the network you will surely see them we're also sending a bunch of headers uh this is my header example value another header another value return another value another header you do not value so we should be able to see all of these headers in the in the response because we were listing them so well we send it well we see we see the proto which is the version http 1.1 the method which was get the request URI, as you see it has a stripped host host name and port the url the scheme the hosts have been stripped out we have passed we get get the raw query which is basically the the query as it as it's retrieved the url fragment has also been uh stripped if you call this from another client maybe from your own go program it it will probably be found well the hostman and the port are not are not to be seen because as i said those are part of the host and the host is not there then we see the query values we have query one hello which are the ones that represent here and query two to world all of the headers there's a bunch of headers that are sent by postman actually it sends by user agent it's the one i i set it up then there's an authorization my header the one I, I set up another header with another value yet another header with yet another value the refer that we set on on the headers which is www.example.com cache control this is sent by postman this is also sent by postman and this is also sent by postman and all of this is sent by postman so those are all of our our headers we saw how to access a header in particular by so this is the, the one we were, we were accessing and the remote address which is the address that actually made the request which is this and the body which is empty because we sent nobody um so let's see we have all of these elements and as we see everything there correlates to what we were, were doing in in our handler print the proto print the meta print the request uri print the different elements of the url uh, we are not printing username and password because that's separated. As I said, it, uh, Chrome, for example, strip them out. Uh, the hostman and the port are not are not accessible because we are sending a request on our own machine. We are seeing all the query values and the headers. And here we are accessing one header in particular, which is my header. And also a refer the user address, Asian, the remote address, and the body, which is empty. We have another handler in our program. This is uh, the post handler that it's it's uh, registered at at the path slash uh, post. This post handler basically will will take uh, form parameters. Uh, there's something different about uh, how post is sent uh, uh, in respect to get. You can send uh, values in key value form in the body of the quest. To do that, this is very important. You need to do this before you access the body in any way, is to parse the form, to do a request parse form. This is what uh, takes the elements in the body and puts them in, into, into variables that we can access. Well, we're going to have the method, print the method, print the request URI, and then we're going to iterate through the form parameters. Uh, the form parameters are, are of type value, values, which is a string key, and a slice of a strings uh, for values. That's why we have to join them. And if we want to access one individual form parameter, we can do a er, uh, request form get the name of the value we want to access. So let's look at how this runs in, in Postman. Uh, we have um, 
a request here the on the on the set that it's on the repo uh we're basically doing a post uh method a post request to a slash post on the body we are sending your x or uh, form encoded encoded data it's example we have this the following fields example example value another field another value yet another value yet another value the data for post gets sent on the on the request body so that's why you need to do the the parse form in the beginning before you can you're able to access uh, those parameters in our handler so let's see how it how it goes well we have the method which is post the request uri which is uh, slash post the form parameters which are example example value another field another value yet another value yet another value and we have the individual form parameter which is uh, yet another value there Another important thing thing is that we can access on our own request form as we're doing here. You, we can also access on not only the post value but also a query string values. So if we send posts with a query string here, we have query, query values, and we send it, it will be shown when we iterate through our form. It's here. We will now be looking at the second example. In this one, we're going to be using GitHub uh, Gorilla Max. I'm sorry, I was quoting the whole path. But well, we're going to be using Gorilla Max as a as a as a multiplexer. Uh, we need to run Go Depth. Uh, we need to run Depth for it to run because it's it doesn't really. So we move to example two. We we'll run that init b so we can see what's happening. It finds that we need the Gorilla Max package and it actually resolves the dependencies. Now we save it again. It's going to find it and there it is. So in this example, we'll be using Gorilla Max as a, as a multiplexer because as we have, we saw on the, on the last section's video, it has some advantages over the, the standard uh, multiplexer of, of, of the Go standard library. There are other uh, multiplexers that you can use um, that have functionality similar to Max. For example, Gochi. And there are a lot of others. Uh, Max is sort of a standard. Okay, so let's look at our first handler. What we're going to do is we're going to be having a path that has two, two parameters in the path, name and page. Name and page uh, will be the, the parameters we 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 can actually change that when we when we make our call and have different different parameters there and it it will still be uh directed to this handler in that handler we can access those variables first by using max bars on the request after that we have the variables and we can call them as if they were a map in this example all, all that we're going to do is just get the parameters and then print them Apart from that, with Gorilla Max, what we can do is we can set path with different posts and have them have dif different handlers. Of course, we could do this by, uh, on by ourselves. We have seen uh, just now, so a couple of minutes ago, how to access the method of uh, of a request in our handlers. We could actually do check for the method in the request and have different functionality on the same handler. But this is a lot more more practical. So what well, we have for method post, uh, we have post handler function, and for method get, we have get handler handle function of the same path. On these handlers, the only thing we're going to do is print the method and print the request URI. Now we're going to test this in Postman. First, we got to run it. So it's running, and now we have example two params in path. Here we have the path. We are passing as the name parameter item ID. Well, let's change that to item name. And page four. And when we send it, we access it from the pass through Mox, uh, through Mox using item name and page four. The other thing we were look looking at is to have the same path with two different methods. In this case, get. We get the method get. And in this case, post. Uh, Gorilla is uh, Max is a little more complex than that. 
it has a bunch of other uh, functionality that you can use, for example, like subdomain or a lot of other things. You can check it out if you want. And as I said before, uh, you know, there are other options to 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 Max, for example, Gochi. You, you could explore that too if you want, but Max is, works pretty well and it's pretty standard. Though some people complain that it might be a little slow, but for general usage, it's pretty good.